So I'm going to move on now. CNN, I, I, I cannot believe what I've been hearing the past couple of days. You know, I worked for CNN back in the 80s, uh, shortly after it first came on the air. And the name <clears throat> was what they were about. Cable News. News, not opinion. And I said before, when Ted Turner started that network, it was more or less a reactionary move on his part. He was sick of, of seeing the networks um, providing commentary rather than just reporting the news. So cable news network was supposed to be that. We were told over and over and over, those of us who are writers and producers, there are no personalities here. There's only one thing, news, report it. Well, over the years, of course, CNN morphed into uh, not just a news um, network, but also opinion, advocacy journalism, which I certainly find nothing uh, nothing uh, untoward about that or against First Amendment rights or whatever, however you want to phrase it. But a few months ago, a new sheriff came to town. I think his name, I, I don't know how you uh, pronounce it, L-I-C-H-T, Licht, Chris Licht, is that it? I think so. And when the new management took over CNN, they made it very clear that Perceiving CNN as a liberal network was going to stop right here and right now, as Trump said at his inauguration <laughs> speech. So they got rid of uh, some of the vo voices on the network that, that were advocacy voices. Um, who was the guy that had... Uh, Oh, I forget his name. Damn it. He had a real good show. Wish I could remember things. I ought to write things down, right? Um, but the new management said that CNN was going to become more um, mainstream, which is bullshit. There's no such thing in this country anymore as mainstream. It doesn't exist. There is the progressive movement to try to save the soul and lives of everybody in this country, and then you have the neo-Christian Nazis. There's no mainstream there. What, you know, what the fuck are people talking about when they say, well, let's move back to the center? What center? There isn't one. But I digress. So <clears throat> I find out that CNN is going to put Trump on the air live for an hour in prime time, a so-called town hall telecast around the 2024 presidential campaign. I, I mean, this is fucking unbelievable. You know, Trump spent the better part of the last seven years chewing on CNN's ass, attacking its reporters as enemies of the people, like Jim Acosta, calling, reporting fake news. He tried to ban uh, Acosta from the White House. He mocked its ratings. But under the new fascist leadership, that's what it is at CNN. Oh, they are going to take... This twice impeached, indicted, scummy bastard, and give him an hour prime time. And by the time this little bullshit town hall is put on the air, I'm sure he will be indicted on more charges. And according to the format, he's going to take questions from Republican voters. And this will be in the CNN produced event. Next Wednesday, come on, Jack Smith, hurry up, in New Hampshire, the state that will hold the first Republican primary. Ah! Now, as you might expect, this announcement by CNN, oh my God, got some expressions of shock uh, at both CNN and Trump. Some critics of CNN 
took to social media to suggest a boycott of the network. Uh Uh-huh. And one of the supporters of this filthy goddamn Donald Trump grifting lying bastard called Trump's acceptance of the invitation, quote, a Romney move. And the implication there that it revealed a moderate sensibility inside Trump, reminiscent of that Mitt Romney. Ah! And then there's Norman Ornstein, a prominent, eminent, you might say, political scholar. He put it this way, CNN's invitation to Trump legitimizes a man under indictment, currently on trial, with more indictments to come, who incited a violent insurrection against the country and its constitution and democracy. And the invitation, Ornstein added, is a godsend, a network he hates, bowing down to him and giving him attention and airtime. End quote, Norman Ornstein. Ornstein. Some of the uh, statements of uh, shock also came from inside CNN. CNN staffer, Speaking on the condition of anonymity, called the decision baffling. The staffer said, quote, he's going to be taking questions from voters. This was a guy who tried to overturn what the voters decided in 2020. You see what's going on here, don't you? You don't have to be a weatherman to know when it's raining outside, do you? Now, CNN... The their network's uh, political director, some little punk named David Chalian. Uh, uh, wait, do you hear what he said? Uh, officially, uh, you know, he's trying to imply that CNN is just doing what it's always done during presidential election cycles. Well, of course, we always have convicted rapists and shit uh, come on the air. People try to overthrow the government. Yeah, that's all we're doing. Here's what Chalian said: "Quote." CNN goes all in on covering the presidential campaign. And a key piece of that is town halls with the candidates. This format helps inform voters about their choices. <laughs> what? Chally and you asshole. God, I wish I worked at CNN right now so I could walk into this darkest office and... and throw my ID card in his face and resign and walk out the door. I mean, oh my God, to help inform voters about their choices. Hey, David, you dumb shit. He just tried to overturn. Oh God. And CNN is based right here in Georgia. And David Chalian knows goddamn good and well what Trump tried to do here in Georgia. But he makes that kind of a statement that CNN, well, CNN, uh, we use this format to help inform voters about their choices. Jesus, bleeding Christ. (sighs) You know, since the orange vomit left office, he's been indicted on 34 felony counts by a New York grand jury. Um. He worked to promote the violent overthrow of this country. He's the subject of multiple state and federal investigations. There's a rape trial that's about over. There really is not a rape trial. God damn it. it it's a, uh, uh, a trial that accuses Trump of uh, slander, um, libel, lying. But it's all about the woman that he raped. Uh, but Chalian said, okay, that may be true, but he's also the front runner for the nomination. He said this, quote, for us, our job, despite his unique status, is the same. We have to hold him to account for his words and his actions. I don't think our mission as journalists is anything less than to cover the news. And he's the news. Oh, you little bastard, you. Oh, my God. You know, we're just we're just covering the news. That's all. Uh, what is there an issue here? <sighs> now, uh, the question I would ask is, how in the hell 
with CNN giving this orange son of a bitch an hour of, of primetime airtime in front of a bunch of brain fucking dead Republican voters, a, a lot of whom are going to be Trump supporters. How is that enabling CNN to hold Trump to account? That's what David Chally and Kay said. We have to hold him to account for his words and his actions. So you do that by awarding this treasonous son of a bitch an hour of prime time air? Oh my God. Well, um, <laughs> this little town hall is going to be hosted by one of the morning anchors, Caitlin Collins, who will also ask questions. Jesus. Politico website speculated yesterday that Trump's decision to appear on CNN was a snub of Fox News. I'll show you because Fox and other media properties controlled by the Murdoch gang have given favorable attention to Ron DeSantis. Where the fuck are we in some twisted version of, of, of an insane person's vision of fourth grade? Well, they're giving Ron DeSantis attention, so I'm going to go over here to CNN. Oh, boy. One of the uh, <clears throat> little piglets that advised Trump said yesterday that Trump's decision to appear on CNN was aimed at, quote, going outside the traditional Republican comfort zone to reach new voters some other candidates are too afraid to take this step in their quest to defeat Joe Biden and are afraid to do anything other than Fox News. CNN executives made a compelling pitch to the Trump campaign. End quote. You know who's going to be the winner in this, don't you? The pig, the filthy goddamn orange Nazi, Donald Trump. He'll be the big winner. For one thing, he gets access to... Um, CNN's comparatively small, but theoretically moderate primetime audience, which will expand the orange son of a bitch's message beyond his MAGA filth. And in addition, Trump knows he's unlikely to face any really tough questions from the audience members. <laughs> Please. So he'll be able to stand there and bluster and fart and wheeze and do his, his Trump, oh, look at me, I'm a victim. Uh, oh, oh, more witch hunt, witch hunt, witch hunt. In order to avoid being nailed by any direct question. And if anything goes wrong, well, you know, you know what he'll do. As soon as he gets off CNN's air, he'll, he'll immediately put up a pitch on his website for money saying that CNN was biased and unfair to me. Help, help, send me more money, you dumb fucks. Come on, I need more money, money, money. <sighs> Hi, True Seekers, Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network it's a listener supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast so hosts like me mike malloy can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like we're often controversial but we're never boring weeknights 9 p.m in the east 6 p.m in the west on the progressive voices network always progressive always on i'm mike malloy keep it lit